Once there was a family with two boys, one girl, and a mom and dad, and they were looking for a house to move into. They found this huge house that was like a mile long with a pool and a garden, and like it was a mansion, basically. So they asked the owner how much it was, and the owner just said, just take it, I can't take it anymore, and he ran off, and they didn't pay him anything. But then strange things started to happen. Faucets would go on and off, lights would go on and off, doors would open and close, and the mom and dad finally couldn't take it anymore. So they left a babysitter with the children, and the children dared the babysitter to go, to go in the closet with the door closed and the lights out. And the babysitter did not want to do this, definitely not, but she wanted to get a good payment, so she just went in the closet. She stayed there a minute until she opened the door, but it wouldn't open, it was locked. She looked behind her and there were, and there were five ghostly figures floating there. We have been locked in here and were killed. Now you shall be the same. They took a knife and cut off her arm. The woman was suffering. So the family tried to burn down the house. They tried and tried, but it would not burn down. So suddenly there was a pop, and all these people made of smoke started flying out. And they were cursing and screaming, you'll be sorry, we'll come back. And, and the family moved to another house, but little did they know what mysteries were hidden in that one. And that's the end of my story. There are different kinds of fairies. Some fairies are normal size. Some fairies are really tiny, like the size of my thumb. Some fairies don't know about that they're fairies for a long time, almost all their life, until they're 60 or something. Once you know that you're a fairy and you actually believe it, your wings start to grow. At least that's what I think. One thing that's really bad for fairies is the one way they can die is from disbelief. When a child stops believing in fairies, a fairy can die. One of the blinking fairies, they would say, clap if you believe in fairies. And then if you clap, it might save a fairy's life. I want to save a fairy. Sometimes online I search, are fairies real or something? And there are a lot of things that say yes, 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 and yes. Maybe one day I could be a fairy, and today I would get to be one so I could tell you more about fairies. My story is called the Missing Pearl, it's about a boy named Matthew, and he has to go through these tasks, and then he has to go, his first task is to go to Australia, and then he went to his friends, and then they just went on the ship, and then Zeus came. He tried to throw a thunderbolt, but it sank instead. Then um, Poseidon just, makes the wave go up and then down and then the ship is now in midair and Zeus controls the ship and flies it to somewhere else instead of Australia because Zeus knows and then he they believed Matthew about like Greek gods were real and then they were. This is a big ice pop and this is a little ice pop and this is Cinderella and this is Ariel and this is a sleepy bee. Once upon a time, all the princesses ate ice cream. One ate chocolate, one ate vanilla. When they were mashing the ice cream, birds ate it and they were so happy that the birds ate it. They finished their food and then they had ice cream and cake. So they have five cakes. And they have five ice creams. And they have five ice pops. That's the Robin. The robins were so sick that they went inside the doctor and they and they let and they sleep with the doctor. The doctor say, "You're all better. Go away. I want to see you again next time." They went home and their nest and they slept. And that's in my story. There once was a kitten named Chickpea. His mother named him Chickpea because he was as small as a chickpea. So he got adopted one day and they went for a walk in the woods. I don't know why, but they brought him with them. 
So he gets up and walks down to the river right by their camp. He sees a bunch of big, big wild cats fishing, and you know, he's only like that big, so they're really big. He sees them fishing, and every time they catch a fish, they shout out to each other, I got one. So he sits down and tries to fish, and he's just about to catch like a minnow, and he falls in, and then suddenly this huge, big bass fish comes jumping out of the water and with the chickpea in his mouth and goes, I got one! Thanks. Once upon a time, there was a little girl and a little boy in in the ocean. There's all snow and ice there. It's like Alaska. The girl was named Katara, and she was a waterbender. And the boy was named Sokka. Sokka was showing off to Katara. Their boat got smushed, and then an iceberg appeared, and a boy was in the iceberg, and Katara was like, we need a help, and then she started digging. So that's the end of my story. This is my story. It begins when two people meet. They were um, friends that were friends for a long time and they were having a play date, or kind of like they met in the park. And just so you know, this was a time where they could trade goats and animals for money to produce uh, like eggs so they can eat. And one says, how come you have more goats than me? And the other person says, it is because my father owned the farm. The other father, he worked at a coal mine. Why he didn't have much animals to trade in for money was because he didn't really have time because he kind of was held prisoner. Bye. Uh, I remember when you asked me if there was a king. There kind of was, yeah, there was. So at the end, very end, what happens is everything good happens at the end. And the kid whose dad is a farmer gives the other kid all of the things like goats and cows so he can be equal with his son. This story isn't finished yet. It will be continued soon.